All right, let's try to put it to in. Kicking buckets today. Um, here's our video where we're gonna talk about freckles and how to tattoo with them. All right. Now that that is over with freckles. Uh, freckles are different than moles. Uh, we're putting out the two videos today back to back, so. There's the mole one. You can watch them in tandem with each other. Uh, it'll be done next, which is fun. Uh, but for now, we're just going to talk about what are freckles. How do you tattoo them and what can they do to your tattoos? Uh, so basically, freckles are an aggregation of the organelles that produce melanin. And what they end up doing is dumping a whole bunch of it into that top layer of the skin or into the keratinized cells that are going to be around that uh, organelle, changing the tone and color of it, right? So these spots that are going to be a little bit darker, which are normally seen, which if you want to watch our, our uh, a video on melanin, that should be fine. Um, it's a deep dive. It's a half hour. Fun time. Uh, <laughs> they're going to be a, a stronger concentration or aggregation of those, those pigments that are produced by those melanosomes and uh, dumped into the skin around them. And what they do is they absorb energy, right? And energy is very specific. It's not light, it's energy. So when we have people that have freckles on top of the body, usually it's gonna be uh, activated. They can get darker when it's sunny out if they hang outside, right, during the sunny seasons. So we're gonna see variations in them along with their skin tone. And usually the skin around it is gonna be lighter. Now freckles can occur on anyone, but they're easily identified with type one and type two skin. So. <coughs> Swallow a little bit of spit there. Um, how this can affect the tattoo is if we take this and we have our happy little sun guy here. Let's do this, right? Boop, boop, boop. A. And he's shining light down <coughs> on these, these spots where there's melanin uh, aggregations of the freckles versus knots that in the spots around them are at least different variations inside of them. Um, what we're going to see is the skin where those bits of, and this isn't actually where everything is located, but I'm just doing it for illustration, um, where those freckles are, are going to, let's do our little sun rays here, where they're moving down and in. Those freckles are going to absorb energy, right? And they're gonna make the amount of energy that's gonna pass through them decrease which is interesting because if we have pigment that's residing down there, all the way through here, boop, 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 boop. I put those arrows down too far. <laughs> I really wanted to see them dotted. Um, if we have that decrease of energy that's gonna be passing through them versus stuff that isn't, is you're gonna have a spot that is going to look darker, right? Because there's less energy that's going to be able to pass through, interact with that pigment that we've in installed in the skin during a tattoo. And then for that energy to come back out, it's going to be even further reduced, right? So we might as well put in my even dashed lines here where it goes like this and then, ah, there we go. I like dashed lines today. Um, so that means that we're going to have like large variations inside of those freckled areas wherever we have a tattoo that we're applying. And it's, it's cool. Like sometimes you can use this with like textured black and gray. Um, if you know where you're going to be putting like light and dark things, maybe there's just like a bone that's like aged or, you know, whatever, uh, it's going to be going through and those light variations that are going to be interacting with the pigment down there can increase that texture that you have, which is friggin' cool. Right. But what happens if we're trying to use a color like yellow? Well, if we remember, our, I don't know if we've done it just yet, our, our color theory, which we have a class actually coming out about that, me and Brian made it up, uh, a color theory, uh, this is like our, our color wheel, which we're going to do like a 3D one, but we'll use it as a, as a 2D uh, space, <laughs> boop, 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 um, where we have a pure color and then it's tinted with the use of white and black, right, to make grays that create variations inside of it. Like if we have a yellow, right, we'll put our yellow here. Boop, boop, boop. Um, our yellow is gonna be set in that pure tone. We're gonna have our light yellows coming one and our dark yellows coming in each one of these directions, right? I'm just digging these dotted lines today. So if we have our variation here, where we know that 
the pigment that's interacting with stuff underneath that freckle, the hyperpigmented space, right, is going to be absorbing more energy. We know that black absorbs energy as well. It's going to end up skewing that base tone down and making it darker. Well, the spots that don't have our melanized stuff are usually going to come out looking lighter, right? Because they're going to be able to get more quantities of that pure light coming into it. Now, this is tricky when you're doing something and you want it to look flat because you're literally going to have two different tones where something is light and something is, let's see how muddy I can make this with some purple. Something is not. That worked perfect. Right? So if we're trying to do something like a solid yellow petal on a rose, you're going to see a lot of variations inside of them, right? And that can make it look muddy. And if you're a perfectionist and you want to figure out how to make it so that it always looks relatively constant, there is something you can do. Now, most people would consider this overkill, but this is better tattooing and that's what we do. So <laughs> let's get rid of this stuff here and let's go back. Goodbye, Mr. Sun. To something simple. First off, when you're going to be going, and this is how we do stuff at this shop, and I have people come in before we get the tattoo, and we'll do an in-person consult um, before we do anything. That way I can visually inspect their skin, check for freckles, moles, and other things that may occur. We can also plan these positioning, the size, and make any type of final changes to the design before the actual day of the appointment. Uh, and when we do that, if I have a design that I know is going to be going on well, whatever, some big old hand or some shit or on a, on a form. Um, and I know that there's going to be variations of those freckles maybe throughout it, some are overlapped or not. I will go have the people pay a, you know, just a minimal fee. It's just a minimum price, whatever the shop is. And uh, once we've placed everything and they're ready to go home, I'll do a setup like I'm going to do um, a patch test, right? Clean space. We've already prepped the skin, got gloves on. Everything's good. Fresh new needle bars. And what I'll do is, boop, I'll blow this up a little bit. If I have a freckle and not over here, right, I will take like a five round, loose, whatever, right? Dip it into some of the color that I know I'm gonna be using in that space. I'm gonna make a single poke inside the freckle, a single poke outside, and I'll take a picture of it. Just right at the spot, head on home. Uh, the idea is with the hand poke on this, we're gonna be saturating very small amounts of pigment into this, and we can see the variations of it once it settles and heals, which should usually be about, what, five to 10 days out. And then what we can do is take those different differences where we'll have one and another and we're going to have our light and dark tones right so our dark tone is going to be the one that's going to be filtered through the freckle and our light tone is going to be the one that's outside now our light one is the one that we want to modify and we want to try to match it to whatever the dark is so if you get the client when it's you know healed up like 10 days out or so to take a picture of the space where the freckle is where you've done the patch test send it over to you if you use procreate it's awesome if not you can just eyeball this right and what you're going to do is mimic that dark tone and this is going to be our base for any space that is not going to be around the freckles right all we're going to do is artificially tint the tone so that when we butt our modified light tone up to the space where the freckle is we know that it's going to match and that means that every time you do one of these freckles you are going to use that original base color to go over top of them and it takes a lot of time <laughs> But if you're into having things look really, really, really smooth, regardless of the actual variations in the skin, this is how you do it. Does that make sense? Anyways, that's it for today. Uh, if you like this, subscribe, leave a comment, like, hit the bell, all that other stuff. I don't know. Uh, check out our swag shop. We've got uh, some sweaters and stuff we're putting up there, which I know it's not really sweater weather in the northern hemisphere right now, but they're still pretty neat. Uh, we've got a hat, and I've got a couple other things that are going to be going in there, including our six-block rock star. <laughs> If you're famous in your own area, go and check it out. Anyways, that'll be it for today. See you next time. This is Ryan for Better Tattooing, signing off.